Welcome to the Hunting Standard Podcast, featuring your hosts, Brady Ovid and Garrett Wood. Now, join us and dial in your next hunting adventure. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to episode, uh, seems like 197 after all our technology problems we fight with on this show, but... Episode 18. 18? Yep. Okay. We've done about five or six that have been bust. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe yeah. 25. 18, that's, like that's going on the air, but number yeah. all right. 25, that has been... All right. Well, we got a cool Actually, guest yeah. here today, uh, Zach Fort with High Water Guide Service at a... Um, Grand Lake, Oklahoma. Is that where you're at, Zach? Yeah. Yep. Grove, Oklahoma. Grand Lake's the lake. Okay. All righty. Well, we're stoked to hear about some good fishing stories here today, I think. So if you want to introduce yourself a little bit and just tell us a little bit about what you do there, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, my name's Zach. I've been a guide on Grand Lake now for just over three years. Um, my main target species is paddlefish. I do other stuff as well, like crappie and catfish, but you can pretty much catch those wherever. Um, but with paddlefish, you know, they're, they're more secluded. You know, some states have them, some states don't, some states allow you to fish for them, some don't as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my main focus with my guide service is paddlefish. And, uh, you know, I do some other stuff, you know, outside of guiding. I'd say right now I'm just part-time guides and then I, I have another job on top of that, but clearly my passion's fishing. Who doesn't want to go fishing every day? <laughs> yeah, you exactly. betcha. <laughs> We're right there with you. So yeah. yeah, I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Do we got any, do we got any big news we need to cover before we jump into this stuff here today? Um, the Montana news for the week anyways, is you can apply for tags now. Yeah. March 1st was the day. They pushed back the deadline, right? So you um, have longer now? Yeah, so it used to be like some random date in the middle of February when your fishing license would expire, and then they'd come out and snipe you with <laughs> tickets and everything. But now uh, March 1st um, is the day. Officially, the 2023 season starts. So if you are still out there ice fishing in Montana doing whatever, yeah, you might want to get a new license because... <laughs> It's the new year, but or pick your direction to run. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You can uh, <laughs> apply for all tags, uh, super tags, anything. Um, it's all ripped and ready to roll. They got a new video on there, so if you don't know how to apply, oh yeah, they got this nice guy on there. That's good for them because I was everything. thinking about doing a video of that. I was like, that'd be helpful. Yeah, that'd be helpful for myself. Go yeah. and watch this shit. Yeah. Try and learn. But um, just navigation. It's pretty easy. I think Montana's. Kind of list everything out for you, but yeah, we have till the fifteenth. So you guys, you guys it later now? For like a um, yeah, we have. So we have multiple different things. Um, for residents, there's a gamut of things: draws, super tags, uh, over the counter stuff. Um, and then for non-residents, you have to apply for. Um, it's a draw, but it's. A, they give out 17,000 different combo tags um, for deer and elk and everything else. But I think you have to have that done by April 1st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll, we'll get after that. <laughs> yep. Big paycheck coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> but you betcha. yeah. What about you? Any big news? Oh, big news. I don't have a lot of big news this week. I, uh, what I dropped on you this morning, I got to experience the, negative side of having a hunting dog the last day or so here she uh skunks she likes to chase things and she which is good that's what she's for but decided she wanted to go after one of them goofy looking black and white striped cats so she's been living the <laughs> low life outside on the porch for the last few days <laughs> No coming in the house anymore. It smells like <laughs> trash. You know, I didn't I didn't think I got COVID ever. You know, I didn't think I ever got it, but I didn't smell it, so maybe I did. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that was it. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. 
What about with you, Zach? Is there any big outdoor news in your neck of the woods? Anyone cheating someone or putting <laughs> weights in fish or anything like that? <laughs> uh, no, the only big news is uh, down here in Oklahoma, the, the spawn is kind of kicking in right now. They're all at the mouth. The males are all at the mouth of the river getting ready to kick up. And I'm sure, you know, as it is here, it's pretty much like a, a holiday when when uh, snagging season kicks in. You got everybody on the banks casting and throwing weights and all that. It's it's a good time. But that funny story, um, last year, there was actually a bust on caviar on our lake. They had, uh, oh. there was this, uh, this place that had a bunch of cabins and they had a some russians that were renting a cabin and they were there for a little bit and uh i guess they were going out on the water snagging paddlefish taking the eggs and they would take the fish in the cabins and process them in the cabins and they did this for several days while they ended up getting caught when they took the plumbing apart on the cabin it was full of paddlefish parts but yeah, they went to they went to prison Ooh, yeah. over that. Oh wow, yeah, because cow. that caviar yeah. trade, that thing's a big big no no, isn't it? It's kind yeah, of yeah. Down, I don't know, you know, in Montana, but in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma we have a, a research center that takes all the the row and they'll process it, send it to you know to either turn it into caviar or send it to you know like hatcheries and stuff like that. So there is a legal outlet there as far as selling that, Zach? Yeah, you can't sell it. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, there will the, be no uh, sale of caviar. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's it worth? <laughs> yeah, only, only the state can. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's but, it's a lot. I know it's they make a ton of revenue yeah. off of it. Oh, yeah, crazy. But okay. if you if you wanted it for your personal self just to eat and do whatever with um as far as like cooking and whatnot you can do that right yeah i think it's like three pounds per person oh okay something like that which shoot you get a big one then you know that's just a handful of eggs right yeah i don't know if i could ever eat three pounds of caviar anyways (laughs) in my life maybe i ought to try (laughs) it yeah figure that out (laughs) Well, this is, it's cool to have you on here, Zach. And... Oh, man, that's greasy. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, looks excited to have you on here because we uh, kind of part of our deal with the show is just trying to expose these different outlets and different trips that people can go on and um, different deals that are mm-hmm. affordable to go and do. And it seems like what you have going down there is a pretty good deal as far as what I've seen. Um you know, I go up here, like we apply for a tag here to go paddle fish. And I've been a few times, but looking at like on your, your Facebook page or your site there, like the rates that you're charging are, I've thrown in the bottom of the river and went home without any fish. <laughs> so, so it seems like a good deal for people to come and, um, that are looking to go catch one to come down and fish with you. Yeah. And just a just a little little yeah. backstory here, real quick, on like Montana's paddle fishing season, right? You have to for first of all in um, Montana, you have to snag from the bank, right? Like you cannot use a boat to cast a line. No, you can retrieve out of a boat. I think. Yeah, like you can. It cannot be mo. It cannot be operating. Yeah, like you have to be in a still position to be able to snag out of a boat. You can't troll for them, basically, is what we're yeah saying, yeah. right? And then um, also, you get a paddlefish. Yeah, like there's catch and release permits, I guess. Right, but yeah, if you're taking one home, you're one fish. And then there is also uh, a section of. Montana where you can bow fish for one also but yeah yeah that sounds like a good time too yeah I have to try that out sometime but I know just from experience that casting a lead weight from the bank is expensive <laughs> in, <laughs> in Montana because I don't know I don't you know we'll get into how the the water body is and everything over there at Grand Lake but um here 
the rivers that you do that in are chocked full of logs well, and it's in the spring when the runoff's going you know and yeah just, yeah the last year that i was out there I, i'm embarrassed to even say how many hundreds of dollars i sank into the bottom of that river just i mean every <laughs> few casts it seems like you're snagging something yeah. breaking off it was about like my catfishing adventure the one day last summer yeah when it was like oh cast it break off cast it break off great yeah. it's like you get a bite it's the only way you can save your hook yeah but <laughs> so so how are you guys you're going out on the boat right zach yeah so in, in oklahoma it sounds like we have completely different regulations which is which is pretty cool you know that the, that the state's going to decide that because your population in montana is going to be completely different than oklahoma I, mm-hmm. I think Oklahoma's has the biggest population. Um, but yeah, we, all the guys on the lake, including myself, we all go out on boats. I mean, there's no snagging from the bank with the guides that, uh, there is a bunch of that. I mean, like I said, there's, there's some places where people just go crazy and they're lined up. All their little kids have helmets on running around, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, on boat, most, most guides do run, run divers, those dipsy divers. Yeah. and they'll troll for them um but the a lot of people haven't figured it out yet um but live scope is the new future and okay. i've been using live scope for over a year now and it is by far the most efficient um you know you can find a school of fish you can pick at, pick out the bigger ones uh, and it's not easy it takes um, it takes months and a certain setup on your boat to get it fine tuned. But live scope is the only way I do it. I don't run my motor at all. You know, I'll, well, I'll run to the schools of fish and I'll get on them and I'll just run my trolling motor the whole time. And live scope's the future. I've, I've shown people how to do it. Uh, it is very difficult. You gotta have, you know, better coordination. Um, but yeah, that's definitely, definitely the future. There's some other guys on other lakes that do it too, that are really successful, but, but yeah. Sure. That's cool. I kind of, I kind of figured, I mean, obviously live scope is ridiculous. Um, and the technology that that has brought to all types of fishing, especially, you know, bass and crappie fishing and now I guess paddle fishing as well. But I figured that, uh, like side scan would be pretty beneficial too, to find in, you know, large schools or whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh, of paddle fish. But yeah. Yeah. Live that's, scope is that's ridiculous. When I go to start my trip, yeah, they. That's the first thing I'll do. Is usually they're pretty easy to find on the lakes because in Oklahoma you can fish year round. So their patterns, you just have to know the pattern. It's pretty simple. They really stay on like the 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 half of the lake on uh, where the rivers that they go into spawn, and uh, the side scan. You know that's the easiest way. You just run a hundred feet on each side. And I mean, they stick out like like sore thumbs on the on the graph. So I run a Lorance right. on my side scan. That's to me, that's about the best. I've had hummingbird. It's really good in shallow water, but you know, in the winter time, paddlefish. I'll be I'll fish in ninety foot of water, and in the summertime, they're in twenty foot of water. But you know, they could be on the top five foot of the water column. So definitely have to use different kinds of scanning and technology. But it, but yeah, that's. That's definitely the way to do it to, to locate them is with side scan. Cool. So once you guys get on them there, Zach, what's your, or how do you go about catching them then? What's the setup look like? So I run a, I don't know if it's how to, if I'm saying the name right, but it's like Piscophon. It's a, it's like a lower end ocean or, well, I guess they do have saltwater equipment, but but anyway, I run that reel, basically any kind of musky reel. It doesn't have to be like a giant. That's what a lot of people use is those giant reels. Um, because in a boat and with live scope and my trolling motor, I'm going to be able to stay on them. So, but yeah, I'll run. It's like, I think the gear ratio is eight to one to one, I think. And that way, you know, you can burn them if you need to, because they'll turn on a dime when you get them hooked. Um, and then I'll run a hundred pound braid. And the only reason I run a hundred pound braid is, you know, with live scope, if I hook a tree, it is a hundred percent my fault. Um, and then, uh, I just use a meat hunter rod. I use an eight foot 
just because you're constantly flipping out trying to get in front of the fish. Um, and just I use a 14 knot hook. The bigger the better, in my opinion. You get more hook in the fish, less likely to lose it. And then like uh, it. the secret with live scope, and I know a lot of people are going to, you know, start getting into this. Um, but the secret with the type of weight you use, you just use a bank sinker. But the the, the rule is for every 10 feet, you got to up an ounce. So if you're in 20 foot of water, that's two ounces. Sometimes you can get away with a little heavier. But, you know, if you're in 90, you got to use a 10 ounce or a nine ounce. You got to be able to get down there fast enough. But, but yeah, that's that's mainly the setup. Now, when I used to do trolling and I ran divers, I ran uh, I ran the same rods, and then I would use eighty pound braid just because I would I'd be able to you know break it off if I got hung up in a tree, which was all the time when you're running divers. Because those paddle fish yeah. later in the year when they when they get ready to spawn, they'll hug up against the brush, so you're always trying to get close to the brush. And yeah, you you lose a lot of money real quick on those divers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, hear that. So it sounds like uh, the efficiency of just of you figuring out the live scope deal is like saving you money because those dipsy divers aren't cheap either. You know, oh, those yeah. things are. You know, when anything with fishing tackle, the yeah. more components you have on your line, the more money you're losing. <laughs> like we learned, we learned that big yeah. time with steelhead and, fishing uh, right here. Yeah, when uh, like for instance with live scope, I will maybe lose a weight because it frays; it'll twist and and fray. But I maybe use a uh, lose a weight like once every three months. With divers, you can lose a couple hundred bucks in a day. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are always they're always kind of hugging the bottom too, right? Mm, it depends. What I've noticed. And like with live scope, you can judge them better. You can see kind of what's going on. If there's a lot of pressure on them, yeah, they're going to be on the bottom. But if it's, I would say, not including any like temperatures where it's like 80 and above outside, but any time of the year where it's below 80, most of the time they're going to be like uh, like 10 foot off the bottom. Okay. And then how about your spawn down there, Zach? Is that kind of the same time of year is up here like early spring or yeah i would say uh i wouldn't consider it right now but i would say like mid-march to mid-may you'll get some yeah. that are spawning out in may but usually by then they're all spawned out and headed back to the lake sure when is kind of the hot time of year to do um if someone was to come with you like is it all year long it's just great fishing or um do you prefer fishing uh, them closer to the spawn or um it just depends with me anytime i mean really march late february through december that's really when they're at, like water depth they're in the sweet spot which is you know around that 30 foot range 30 to 40 uh you know any shallower it's still pretty easy to catch them but after that, like December, January, early February, they're in 90 foot of water. And that's not very fun. <laughs> right. It's still possible, <laughs> but, you know, it just, it's so much more work. Throwing a 10 ounce weight constantly, reeling it back in 90 foot. But, you know, during yeah, the winter time, you... I would say I average like 10 fish in four hours. But then in the summer, I've caught over 20 in four hours and like in the, yeah. in the spawn. Because we have we have catch and cow. release here in Oklahoma, so you know you can catch as many as you want. And at the end of the trip, if you want a keeper, you can keep it. Some people just like to keep a big one, and once they get it, and then they're done for the day because your limit's one. But so once you hit your limit, that's like you're required to be done fishing, correct? Like you yeah. can't catch the first one and then keep catching, releasing after that. You have to once you put that one in the ice box or whatever, mm -hmm. you have to you're done. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can't imagine <laughs> hooking into one of these things at ninety feet down and trying to fight that out. That's a <laughs> that's a battle, I'm sure. Yeah. Like what would you say your Honestly, average Honestly the 
Or go ahead, finish. Uh, honestly, the the ones in ninety feet, they're fun to catch, yeah. But the the ones that you know, like in the middle of the summer when it's really hot and the water columns come up, you know, there's no oxygen on the where they normally are. They're in that top five foot of water. That is by far the funnest time to catch them. Because, you know, during it's kind of like humans when it's cold out, we don't want to go get crazy and run around and all that. We kind of want to stay inside. So that's kind of my thought on that. But um, yeah, during the summer, you hook them in five foot of water and they'll jump out of the water. I mean, it's crazy. It's a blast. Sounds like good fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what would you say your like your average size uh, in Oklahoma is? Of just like catching them, if, I guess. But just like a yeah, just like a normal trip where we just go out to catch fish and have fun. Um, I would say around thirty, thirty-five pounds. But you know, with live scope, it's I kind of ask the clients like, hey, you guys want to go for numbers or you want to go for quality? And we can be stingy and go for the bigger ones, you know. Or we can just go out and catch a bunch of fish, have fun, and you know, it's it's up to yeah. the clients, really. Cool, sure. Yeah, you see some. I mean, pictures of monster fish coming out. I mean, it's I suppose down there, and then from Montana here as well. Seems like every spring you see one that's just great big old pig. Yeah, pretty wild animals. Yeah. These things are. Like they're so primarily far this year. Yeah, go for it. So far this year, the biggest one uh, that I've seen and that I've caught is ninety pounds out of this lake. Yeah. There's bigger. There's definitely bigger. There's you can find them. <laughs> yeah, hmm. that's cool. Do you like them, Zach? How are they to eat? Um, they're good. It's not my first choice it's kind of hard to beat crappie or you know walleye or something like that but yeah. uh the my advice on that and on my website it's I'm, i have a catch and cook page on there um oh, but cool. smoking them is probably the best you can grill them you can fry them but my only advice is with it is you know everybody wants to keep the giant fish and you know you get a bunch of meat which you do um but the bigger ones do have a that fishy taste to them if you can get one that's like 20 pounds, you know, in that range, the meat, once you clean it up the right way, get all that red meat off, it is pure white and it is amazing. That is the best one to eat. So I, I wouldn't even, I mean, I don't really keep any, but if I had to, it would definitely be one that's in that 20 pound range, 20 pound range. Okay. Yeah. That was my next question was like, I mean, with anything, you know, uh, whether it's a big bull elk or or a deer it i mean it seems like the bigger ones are typically i mean quote unquote like more tough or less desirable and it, that you, obviously in this too you said a, a smaller 20 pounder which i mean 20 pounder right that's that's still <laughs> a big fish but not a big paddle fish necessarily <laughs> yeah. that they taste yeah. a little better what is the texture like is it i mean i i have never never eaten one never slapped a tag on a paddlefish but um in my mind but without ever trying it the texture to me from what people have said is like almost like a tuna steak or something real dense is that accurate yeah it yeah it is it it's kind of especially if you fry it it's it's kind of like chicken it doesn't taste like chicken but it has like the texture of it it doesn't you know it doesn't want to fall apart that's why if you get a smaller one, it's going to be a lot better. It's going to be more firm and taste a lot better. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because these guys are, they're just filter feeders, aren't they? They're just going through the mud and yeah, sucking in whatever trash they find. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they eat zooplankton primarily. That's what the, pretty much their whole diet's off of. But yeah, they'll, and that's what's cool about live scope is you can actually see when they're eating, they'll open their mouths up and their gills, will, they'll look massive on the, on the graph. Um, but they open their gills up and you can see them swim through the water and it's actually cool. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but in the summer, instead of swimming like normal, they actually flip upside down huh. and they, sw I've, I've caught them like that where you catch them in the back instead of the belly. 
They swim upside down and they feed. That's weird. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> learn, yeah, learn something true. new every day. So, how big is this lake mm-hmm. uh, that you're you're looking for these paddlefish? How like is it in Oklahoma? Is it I one guess of the bigger lakes compared or? to like? Yeah, it's it's kind of on the medium to small end, I would guess. I think it's like four hundred and fifty thousand cubic feet of water, or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's not very big. It's it's kind of like a, a just a big river, honestly. If you look at it on the map, it's man-made. It's got a dam on it, but but yeah, it's it's not very big. You can compare it to like Eufaula. It's like a quarter of the size of Eufaula. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. These guys are. They're like a dinosaur, right? Like these things have been around forever. Is there a way to tell, Zach? Do you know as far yeah. as like age on them when you catch one? Um, it's I personally don't know how to tell. I know so we have a research center that opens up from March fifteenth to May fifteenth, and there's biologists there that specifically deal with paddlefish. Um, and there's a couple other that have like side projects, like invasive species and stuff, but yeah, they, they can do everything. They'll tell you everything about your fish. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I know, I think the oldest one I've seen was like 50 years old and it came out of a lake over in either Missouri or Arkansas, but the ones that get like 150 pounds, you know, those, those giant ones, um, you know, I, I would imagine that those around the 50, 50 years old, I would say. Crazy. If somebody if somebody comes fishing with you and catches one, then you can bring it down there and they'll give you some info on it. Yeah, they. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. They have, so it doesn't matter. There's certain locations where they'll do like drop, uh, they'll pick up fish. So if you catch one, you tag it. There's a boat on the water that has giant water tanks on it. And it'll come up and it'll scan your your license and everything and they'll tag your fish, throw it in there. They'll get like 15 or 20. Then they'll go up to the ramp, meet a truck there with the same tanks. They'll take it up to the research center. And then by the time you're done fishing, the clients can go up to the research center and their fish are clean and everything. Okay. They weigh them, take all kinds of measurements, and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. It's a cool deal. Yeah, it is. I was kind of like that, the trip I did this fall out by Seattle, they... I think that's the first one I've ever been on a chartered boat where they had everything cleaned and prepped and vacuum sealed, ready to go by the time <laughs> we were at the, back to the dock. Pretty good deal. Do you know much about the, the biology of a paddlefish as far as like how long it takes them to spawn up, up these tributaries and then um because like i've never heard of anyone catching an itty bitty little paddlefish you know what i mean like <laughs> it's always you know like a, a 20 pounder or or bigger it's never like a little 14 inch or does that even exist like you know have you ever have you ever <laughs> yeah we on, yeah on on this lake i mean we've caught them where they're like 12 inches long before but it's completely by accident. I, I mean, you can see them on the live scope, but you can't tell what they are. Like you're trying to go for a big one and you miss it. And especially the all the guys running divers, they'll be running divers thinking, you know, why am I not hitting a fish? They'll reel it in and there's a little one on there and they didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, they like paddlefish, the males, they can start um, spawning sooner than the females. I don't know the exact age. I do know the... So the males, they'll spawn, you know, once, or they'll spawn, you know, like every year or every other year. Now the females, they're more like every two years to three years. They don't spawn every year. And I, if you ever get the chance to process one and you're cutting the fat, it's a, if it's a big female, you can actually tell by the fat, you know, like what stage it, it's in. Because clearly you can identify the eggs if they're this year's, like they're going to hatch this year. But if you get like okay. a, a first year fish, you can barely see and identify the eggs from the fat. It's almost the same color when they start, but then they turn into like a really dark gray instead of the, the white, like the fat is. Okay. And what, what's the optimal, the optimal time to harvest those? Is it, and for like 
your food, I guess. The caviar, is it when it turns gray or is it like at that white stage? Yeah, you want it like really dark gray and it'll kind of plump okay. up a little bit. That's so like from March 15th, well, in, in Oklahoma, you know, mid-March to, to mid-April. Other than that, they're not ready. Okay. And what does that taste like? Because I've never, I've never had it, but I'm curious. I'm curious <laughs> about that. Because I have, I feel like some reserves. I've actually with tried it. Fish eggs. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's kind of you got to put a lot of salt in it, and so like if you put a, a little bit on a cracker and some salt, and you know put another cracker on there, so you can't taste it. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> This luxury food. Oh man, <laughs> it's decent. Yeah, <laughs> rather a big yeah. steak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Same here. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have a a favorite trip you've been to, out uh, on, Zach? Or go ahead. Um. Honestly, I don't know. It's there's a bunch. It's hard to remember a lot of them. But I bet you get some good stories. You know, it's always fun when you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of stories. A lot of them I can't repeat. You 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 learn <laughs> yeah. a lot about people. <laughs> yeah, like, I bet. It, you know, you always like taking people out and catching catching giant fish, but you know when you when you're able to get like the whole family, you know, there's a couple trips where I've had the whole family, and you know everybody gets to enjoy that. Everybody's you know, usually little kids, you know, we've all had like brothers and sisters where we just fight and argue, but usually when everybody's fishing, you know, there's not a lot of that. There may be competitiveness going on, but you know, that's part of it. It's, it's always a good time though. Yeah, sure. So like, kind of dive into your boat and like how you have it set up and how big it is. Cause I mean, these are big fish, you know, and the, little dinghy that we used to have fishing around here. It was barely big enough to put in a pike, let alone a 90 pound fish. But <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, so I got a 20 foot Crestline boat. It's, uh, like it's the 20 or the 70, 20, I think. So the biggest thing about it, especially if you're going to do live scope is, you know, everybody wants a sea arc, you know, those big fancy heavy duty boats. But right. you can't have a boat that's too heavy when you're doing live scope or too long, um, especially when there's current on the lake or the river. You got to have a light boat so that way you can follow them around because they're pretty they're pretty agile, especially if they're spooky. I mean, they'll bolt off like crazy. But so, yeah, I have a 20 foot crest line. Um, I have a Garmin Force trolling motor. That's that's definitely I've had, you know, Hummingbird or not Hummingbird, uh, Minn Kota. And they're okay. I like the the trolling motor remote for the Minn Kotas, but yeah. when you're chasing paddlefish and they can turn on a dime, you got to have a fast uh, pedal. And so I went with Garmin. Uh, it's by far my favorite trolling motor. Um, then I run a 12-22 graph for my live scope. The reason I have the 12-22, I think they make the 42, but the 42 is touchscreen. So if you get little kids on your boat, they're like, oh, what's that? <laughs> Touching it. And then next yeah. thing you know, you lose your picture and you don't know where the fish is at. So, um, but, and then just like for my, when I go to locate the schools, I got a, a Lowrance and it, it's the, uh, it's a 12 inch. I can't remember the model, but it's, sure. it's like I said, the side scan on it. That's pretty much all I use it for is the map and the side scan it comes with maps already. So you can't complain about that. Um, right. but yeah, the side scans, very important it, you know if you're fishing for crappie looking for brush piles or fishing for catfish and ta catfish are tough to find you got to have a detailed um, live scan image you know it goes nice and smooth and slow with your boat you can see them look like little sardines stacked up in the mud or something you know on a gravel bar but um yeah. but yeah that's it's pretty plain and simple for paddlefish i mean just got to have the right trolling motor live scope um the motor I have on my boat's a Mercury 115. You know, everybody wants a bigger motor, but that thing it does it does the job. Gets you around 30 miles an hour, but any faster yeah. than that, clients start grabbing stuff and squeezing. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. it's it's nothing special. I mean, this is the boat I started out with guiding. Um, I'm getting ready to get another boat, and uh, 
it's probably going to be a sea arc. So, you know, I'm not going to hit on sea arc They're They make some pretty nice boats, but you just can't have one. That's like the 26 foot. That thing is a tank basically, but you gotta be pretty agile. Nice light boat. And it's basically a big, like semi V is what mine is. So. Sure. Yeah. That's what I have a, I bought a tracker I have a, uh, and it's got a 115 on the back and I think rips, but yeah. Mm -hmm. How was it getting into guiding down there? Was that a big process or was it not too bad to get licensed for that? Um, so Oklahoma makes it actually pretty easy. It's just doing the right thing, like getting liability insurance, um, and stuff like that. I'm, Basically, you just have to buy the license in Oklahoma. Um, but, you know, the hardest part, I would say, of being a guide is is devoting all the time and the maintenance on the on your boat and all your equipment. But if if you can find time to do that and what's really cool is most of the, all the guides on Grand Lake are very helpful. You know, if they see that, you know, your boat's down or something, they're always coming around asking you know, if you need help or something like that. Um, you know, there's, there's nice. a couple little groups of guides here and there, you know, I, I got, I got my group of guides that we all talk and, you know, let each other know where the fish are at. Cause it's bottom line is we want people to catch fish. If, if we don't, if we go out and we don't catch fish, we're not success, successful, you know, clients aren't sure. going to come back. They're not going to come back to grow. And I kind of look at it as like building a brand basically for the lake. There's, there's a lot of good guys on there. There's, there's some that have been there 20 plus years, but you know, just kind of working with each other makes it a lot easier on everybody else. There's trust me, there's plenty of fish for everybody to catch, you yeah. know, people you kind of give hate to the guide, but you know, it's, it's not always about keeping fish. You don't have to, that's completely up to the clients, but you know, we just, you know, we make it affordable for the clients because for someone to go out and buy a brand new boat or a used boat, all the equipment. I mean, we don't want to get into those numbers, but it's ridiculous. I can knowledge. tell you from experience. So, but the, yeah, I can tell you from experience. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Brady, <laughs> Brady's chasing around the bass tournaments up in our part of the world. So yeah. he's getting firsthand experience in it's that the, realm. It's, uh -oh. Montana's the worst place to be a bass fisherman because the fishing's really good for about three months <laughs> and then it snows and freezes again. <laughs> up here fighting nice. <laughs> yeah so yeah they the bass fishing on grand lake they've actually been stocking some florida strain bass in there so grand lake's getting Ooh, a lot of attention you from the you know like all the big tournaments and stuff with bass fishing yeah. and paddlefish i think the population last year they they estimated for paddlefish was like seventy thousand, and yeah. there's you know this big all the way i think the lake record was like 130 something holy cow that'd be fun yeah what's the like <laughs> when you hook into one of these things zach how long does it usually take you to land them because they're they fight pretty good by the uh, sound just a, of it, yeah it, going, huh? like a 50 pound yeah, it, in the summer in five feet of water a 50 pounder <laughs> <I'd> say, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's you know it takes a couple minutes to get them in um but you know you hook into one that's like close to 100 pounds it definitely takes a little bit and the trickiest part so like when i bring a fish in the boat i i make sure the hook is out i've been hooked twice in oklahoma we have to have barbless hooks i don't know if it's like that in montana but it's that's one of the regulations and i've been hooked twice so, so i always take the hook out when i have clients in i i just wrap a lasso around the fish's tail and then i'll pop the hook out and then i'll bring the fish in but Gotcha. When it gets to the boat and the fish starts touching the boat, that's when the fight's on, really. And that's when they start going crazy, splashing everywhere. I mean, it's a blast. Yeah. Okay. I've seen some pretty cool art or, you know, like for a whitetail or an elk or something, you might have like a European mount and for a fish or whatever, someone might get it replicated or um, actually mounted or whatnot. But I've seen some pretty cool, like, I don't know if they're European mount, but basically like European mounted shadow boxes of paddlefish bills. And that's pretty awesome, dude. Like lit up. Yeah. Oh yeah. With yeah. lights and such. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I need to get me one. Of yeah. Those. It kind of looks like a, their bill kind of looks like a spider web. Yeah. Yeah. 
So is that all just like cartilage as well, or is there any, is or is it just more dense cartilage, or like what is the composite? Is it calcium? What is it? Um. So yeah, like their their whole bodies are there's nothing but cartilage. I and mean, when you right. start getting into the head, I don't know if it's like, you know, like really thin bone, but their bill and the top of their head, it it does to me it does seem like it has some bone in it. Sure. Yeah. I cleaned one. Yeah, and it seemed like, like it was hard. It seemed like bone. I mean, yeah. it's it's so like fine, you know that. Yeah, I mean, it's flexible, it's easy to move around, and easy to break, hmm. but it seemed like it was actual bone. Yeah, I don't know. They're neat though, for yeah. sure. Cool trophy to have. Have you guys so ever you... caught one with the bill yeah. chopped off before? No, no. <laughs> no. I've no, I've never landed a paddlefish. We we get those a lot. <laughs> what? With the yeah, no, ever. <laughs> like, never. Come down. That's why yeah. we're here learning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got. I've I've spent thousands of dollars on nonsense yeah. to to catch a tree stump. The the action that we get up here is like <laughs> the bank stuff that you're talking about, you know, and it's just shoulder to shoulder, like. And uh, I want you to yeah. I want you to go on YouTube. <laughs> and I want you to YouTube uh, Glendive Montana paddlefish catching or whatever and just see the absolute shit show that goes on here in Montana with paddlefish. It's like blown out rivers that are almost <laughs> flooding the town, like little kids running around drinking Coca-Cola from a baby bottle and <laughs> with mullets and big old dips in at four years old. <laughs> and I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, oh, it's so much. It's so much fun, but it's 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 a time for sure. Yeah. It's like a whole, it's a culture. In it is. These little, it's these like little a little city areas. that sets up there every yeah. spring when the, they're spawning and gets after it. Yeah. It seems awful hard from. What's your guys' like success known. rate? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, it seems to me anyway, from the time that I've spent at it, like it's awful tough to, I mean, people do it obviously, but it's awful tough to land one without having the boat up here. I mean, the guys that are continuously successful, they'll fish from the bank, and once they hook into one, they'll jump in the boat and run it down the river. It seems like there's so many people that hook into them from the bank that get broke off or yeah, that kind of stuff. And the hard thing here, too, is the the rivers, or I don't know how they, they are down there in Grand Lake, but um, the rivers here are like mud and silt, basically. So they're always changing, and so having an outboard is pretty risky sometimes you know because lower units aren't necessarily cheap and yeah racing racing around in a river that's adjusting in you know high water it's just i don't know i don't i'm not a big fan of that so fighting current all the time i usually i usually give it like a couple of hours of paddlefish cast and then i'm like yeah all right time for some catfish (laughs) (laughs) yeah but I, uh, Seems like you I got actually, a dial. Today, I just got range. back in the mail. Oh yeah, but yeah, I, I just got one in the mail today that I sent off um, to get mounted. It was 103 pounds. I was gonna have it up up here in this spot where my guard are at, but uh, it's the bill has to be placed together in epoxy, and I gotta heat up the fins. It's huge. It's it's taller than me, but wow, holy cow! You had the whole fish done then. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it was like seventy six <laughs> inches long. Heck nice. Yeah, damn, dude, that's a big fish. That's neat. So, if someone was, if someone was to let's, let's plug your business a little bit, I guess, if someone was to go on a trip with you, what are the the procedures that they should take to first of all get a hold of you, what to prepare for, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I. You can go on my Facebook page. That's where pretty much most of my effort is. Uh, I actually have a website. I kind of have two websites right now. One of them is getting rebuilt. Um, and then I'm going to ride with that one. It's really close to being done. I, but, but yeah, my, my Facebook page is where I update the most every day. If I'm doing two trips, I'll post all my pictures of the trips and, you know, just some informational stuff too. Um, but you can go on there and message me on Facebook. Um, 
give me a text to call 417-499-6633. But uh, once, once you get in contact, the biggest thing is knowing when you want to go. Um, a lot of people get a hold of me and they say, Hey, you got anything this weekend? And you know, it's generally the answer is no, unless I have a cancellation. So right. kind of be proactive about it. Uh, you know, like a month in advance, two months in advance, but, uh, yeah, just any kind of communication to me, uh, I'm super fast on getting back with that. Um, but you want to, in Oklahoma, you have to have a fishing license and a paddlefish permit. So the permit is sure. free, but the uh, the fishing license is 18 bucks, I think, online if you get it. And then that's it. That's all my clients have to bring. Um, you know, I'll, I'll reach out a week in advance, depending on what the weather looks like and, you know, if we need to bring rain gear or something like that. But it's it's a pretty simple process. I mean, I don't require a down payment. Um, I've had pretty good luck with that. I don't want to jinx myself. But, uh, uh, hey, I have a no catch, no pay policy. So, I mean, that's pretty good insurance for, you know, people like you, know, like you guys, where I, I actually bring a lot of clients in from South Dakota, North Dakota, um, where there's a draw system and, you know, people just get frustrated. And they're like, well, I'm going to go to Oklahoma and catch a bunch of fish. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, that, that's the biggest thing is just kind of knowing when you want to go and then I can kind of work around that. But Sure. And do you, or do you have like a, a lodge or are you just kind of based out of your house and then people just get, you set themselves up in a um, hotel and all that kind of deal? Um, so, yeah, I have, I have my own place down at the, at the lake, but, um, but yeah, clients still have to, to find lodging. And what's great about right. Grand Lake is there is tons of options there's, you know, like Airbnbs, cabins, hotels, tons of casinos. They're everywhere. So, but yeah, there's there's all kinds of accommodations for that. Cool. That's yeah. great. You mind dropping a number, Zach, as far as what you're charging at the moment? So for two people, it's 300 bucks. That covers everything, 100% of equipment. Um, I clean your fish, bag it, tag it, all that. And then per person after that, it's a hundred dollars per person. So, you know, I'm not okay. the most expensive on the lake. I'm not the cheapest on the lake, but for myself, you know, with running live scope, I'm able to do it a little more cost effective or more efficient. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my, my sweet spot for myself. Sure. Yeah. That sounds very reasonable. Like a, <laughs> like a dream. Like I'm yeah. saying, if you, like people that have applied and got the tag up here, and I'm sure the Dakotas as well. You put in for the tag for a couple of years. You rarely, well, myself anyway, I'll never get it the first try. So I got to try a few years in a row to get the t permit to start with. <laughs> and then, I mean, there's no way that you're, there's no way you're going fishing for under 300 bucks. Yeah. I mean, cause you look at like where we live, for instance, wow. we are, we are on the, on the Western half of Montana and wow. to drive corner to corner of Montana, you're looking at almost 15 hours, right? And from from driving from where we live to where you paddle fish, um, at least on the northern end of the state, you're looking at 10 to 11 hours. And to go on the south end of the state, you're looking at 13 hours. And so just there in fuel, you're there and back. You're almost at 800 bucks. Yeah. I you mean, know. all that put aside. Just the tackle. What, yeah, what's your and, and then and then the you tackle you're throwing in the river is going to be more than that. Right, and then yeah. you're buying you're buying a, a a proper rod and you're buying a reel that can handle and then you know fishing line isn't cheap and weights aren't cheap and hooks aren't cheap and and you're gonna blow through them quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I could tell you, I haven't met anyone who doesn't. Uh, yeah, there's like a tally mark. You should have to like <laughs> on your rod just like with chalk, like how many different times have I retied today? Yeah. But. when you when you're taking people out on these trips you're primarily just targeting the these guys then or are you doing any catfishing or any crappy or any of that on these same trips um so when i when i do my trips i try to stick with one type of fish i, yeah. I have different gear for everything else so by the time i swap it out and do all that it's just it just takes time away a lot of junk in the boat getting in the way. Sure. For sure. 
Well, that's cool. Yeah. I hope some people will hear this and give you a call and want to book a trip with you. Because that seems like a great deal. I think we might have to come down and get a little action in there. Yeah, I just learned today that. Hey, I'm all for it. I can guarantee you guys will catch him. <laughs> that's don't say that because sometimes <laughs> it, it it all depends on the animal but sometimes i am such bad luck it's not even funny <laughs> but good fun at least right? you're confident yeah yeah <laughs> good good thing to see out of your guy yeah. right and you said you, you do about two trips a day are those like five hour deals four hour deal uh per trip or yeah so they're they're four hours Sometimes when I have like one trip a day, you know, and, you know, sometimes I'll do, you know, make go it a little bit longer or something like that. Or, you know, if I have a group that doesn't want to keep one and towards the end, if they're like, hey, we think we want to keep one now, you know, I'll, I'll spend the extra time to get them a keeper. That way they can go home and sure. enjoy the meat. Sure. Cool. It's pretty awesome. It sounds like you've got a great direction there zach is just as far as like you're saying building a brand around it i mean offering great customer service and just making sure people are happy when they leave the trip seems like it goes mm-hmm. a long ways for most people and it seems like the guide culture down there is pretty odd like you said yeah. there's a, a group of a group of you guys that um you know quote unquote get along or you know help each other out and little niche here and there um <laughs> And it's that's a totally different atmosphere than up here for the for the most part. Like up here, everyone's kind of hush hush about everything. Slack and out of the trigger. Yeah, each other. <laughs> exactly. And to to get a guide license here, you have to go through <laughs> years of nonsense, anyways. But <clears throat> sounds like you found yourself a pretty good little little gig, anyways. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, they uh. It's that kind of how I got started with everything is my, uh, my girlfriend, her best friend in high school was had her dad was a guide on Grand Lake. And for my birthday, like four years ago, we did a catfish trip. And so it was, it was a little surprise for myself. And we all went out and had my buddy go. I was like, shoot, you know, I fish all the time anyway. I might as well at least break even. And that's kind of what started. Yeah. That's awesome. You betcha. How long have you been running now? A few years anyway? Yeah, just over three years. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, yeah, man. I think go ahead and uh plug your, your website or your Facebook page. Yeah, we'll again. drop it in the description here. Yeah, we'll get it in the description and um hopefully you know, people listening to this will check you out and book a trip. I mean I'm ready to go. Uh, dude. <laughs> yeah. That we sign up. I just I just found out <laughs> with with my potential summer gig that the week after the Fourth of July is open, so yeah yeah I don't yeah. know we'll figure it out. But. There you go. What's a <laughs> we got this deal we do Zach? Oh, the buyer bus. Buyer bus. The buyer bus. Gotta have that right. Mm-hmm. So what's a necessity that you gotta have for paddle fishing? Live scope, dude. Apparently, live scope. Yeah. Is that it? I think I think so the buyer bus yeah, is live besides, scope. Besides, the dead, like yeah. the, <laughs> besides like the the live scope and all that, um, I would say honestly side scan. Yeah, that's that's how you that's how you locate them. I mean, you can run two D and find them, and just kind of, you know, being around the fish for a few years now, you you already know their patterns and. But yeah, side scan, because especially if you're running like divers, when I first started, that's all I ran was divers. You got to be able to locate big schools of fish. You can't mess around with all these little schools. You're like individual fish. And yeah, side scan, start to finish. You know, it doesn't matter if you're running, you're trolling, you're running divers uh, or live scoping. You got to have side scan. Yeah, for sure. I concur. You're a buy on that too, huh? Yeah, on just, I mean... Just the advanced electronics in general, I'm a buy. That's why I have bought. I haven't bought. I haven't broke down and bought live scope yet because here they come out with all these new different things all the time, and I'm like, man, <laughs> chase the new, yeah, yeah newest hot. And it's spendy. I yeah, mean, the, I mean, they're running some good live scope models right now. 
Yeah, they just came out with like LiveScope Plus and Active Target 2 and all this, you know, just another way to get you to spend $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pay to play, buddy. Yeah, I know. All righty. Uh, I'm like a buy. It. I'm a buy on that. You're a buy. He's a buy. He's a you buy. don't even know. I, I don't. You don't even, even know, know what we're a, talking about. I'm out of the loop on that. Other than other than playing with your equipment, I haven't been around it enough to say one way or another. I guess. Yeah, Garrett's like, why don't you have a flat screen TV? Why? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm a buy on them whitetail horns you have in the background, though. That's for certain. Looks like some nice deer there. No, uh, you know, when I'm not when I'm not running guides, that's what my buddy and I do. We go out, we run. For sheds, that's like top three things right there, shed hunting. There you go. That's cool. Bingo. All righty. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, Zach. I appreciate it and appreciate learning about the trips. We might have to get down and do one with you. Yeah, we will definitely keep in touch. Yeah, sounds good to me. Look forward to seeing you guys down here. You you betcha. Take care, man. All right, everybody. Thanks (laughs) for tuning in. Like, subscribe, do the deal on YouTube, and check us out on Amazon, podcasts, everything, (laughs) Spotify, whatever you do. Do the deal. You know, everyone knows. (laughs) 